Thank you very much. And I will move to the roll call by the town clerk. Chairman Ray. Here. Councilor Grennan. Here. Councilor Jordan. Here. Councilor McCausland. Here. Councilor Sullivan. Here. Councilor Wagner. Present. And Councilor Walsh. Here. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to town council reports and correspondence. Do we have any? Yes, um, I'll go with uh, Councilor Sullivan first. Sorry. I just uh, would like to thank Jim Hubner for uh, another wonderful Memorial Day uh, parade and ceremony and everyone who participated. Thank you. And Councilor Jordan. I just to report that the Sugar Range Committee, or the Fire Range Committee, the Fire Range Committee, sorry, um, met last week. And, and we voted <coughs> on an application received, and hopefully we'll have the report to the council for next month's meeting. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Councilor Walsh. Family Fun Day. Uh, and it was also obviously the 250th as well. Uh, the parade was incredible. And to see generations of Cape Elizabeth residents, uh, it, it just, it was incredible. I mean, I sat on the wall at St. Albans in the place I've been for the last many, many years watching this, and it was pretty amazing to see. Um, great to be part of it. Culminating at the end of the day with fireworks at the park, which was just incredible. Um, so hats off to the, uh, to the Family Fun Day committee to all the energy and effort that went into putting that all together. The many folks who stepped up to, uh, to put the dollars together to do the fireworks. I mean, it was just a, a fabulous day. And uh, you know, we've, we've received some correspondence from folks that were there as well who equally feel the way I do that it was a, a day to be really proud to be a resident of Cape Elizabeth. And uh, I just wish I had kids that were part and parcel of the day because it was just a fun day all around and um, again my thanks to the to the family fun day committee thank you Jim I didn't look to my left I apologize anybody here no just really enjoyed the fireworks as well mm -hmm. it's great That's beautiful they started earlier than they were projected though if you didn't get there at 830 you would have uh, if you arrived at uh, a few minutes before nine you would have seen the finale right. it was pretty interesting so yeah, I timed it right at night. Too. I don't know. I got the impression it was it was early. We just I think everybody was so in, in talking to each other and doing a lot of community stuff. It just we we got going and then all of a sudden it started and you felt like it was early. So that, that's sorry about that. It was five minutes of nine. It was okay. Good. I'm glad it was early. I I, I kind of figured it was, but uh, but anyway, it was a good event. Thank you. <laughs> Take a vote on exactly at nine. There you go. All those in favor. <laughs> Either way, they will be able Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm actually giving the tour. Okay, so we'll move on to the Finance Committee reports, uh, the financial dashboard and the monthly financial report. Jim? Uh, well, you've got the dashboard um, in front of you, and I, again, I appreciate uh, Michael coordinating all of the, the detail that goes into putting this together. Um, I asked Michael for some explanation on a couple of the issues. One of the items that's, that's unfinished here is there. There was a, a mention of a possibility of receiving $50,000 from FEMA, which would help offset some of the overruns in our uh, Department of Public Works. And we don't have a whole lot to report on that, but it still is out there. Um, and my hope is that that, in fact, will, will happen. Um, other than that, I think it's, it's straightforward. And again, I would encourage any counselor who has um, some redirect on the design or the, what's included here or how it's done. But, um, you know, based on, on the rest of the documentation that supports this, I think this is an, a nice executive summary for the council. And now that it's, it's posted ahead of time for, you, for the community to read as well. So, and again, I thank you, Michael, for that. Um, you also will, on tonight's agenda, we do have some adjustments to the upcoming uh, budget and I'll let Michael take that later on. And then the only other point I'd like to report is that there was a favorable result of the school budget um, vote last week on the 9th. And um, a big thank you to uh, Deb Lane and her um, team for pulling off uh, the voting that happened prior to the day and closing down shop and setting up housekeeping. 
at the, uh, at the gymnasium at the high school. Um, again, uh, we really appreciate folks coming out to vote. It was only 11% of the total um, uh, electorate. But um, again, the decision was made. And there was also an advisory that, um, that gives some indication of how people felt, uh, both to the school board and to us, in terms of future uh, decisions that we may or may not be making. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. <coughs> Any questions for Jim? Molly. This might be a question for Mike. I'm just curious about uh, whether anybody has any ideas about why the gift shop sales are down. Is it weather related? <coughs> Did we open late? Do we have a problem here? It's uh, really t two reasons. Uh, one is that we had a, one or two rainy weekends last fall. And the second one is we, we had one of our prime weekends where all the computers and everything else went down. And we lost, you know, probably ten thousand dollars worth of sales as a result of all the systems not being available. And it was it was a prime weekend, so it's too bad. Labor Day weekend or something. Yeah, you know, it was. Yeah. And, and that, that, you know, quite frankly, you know, people, some people are buying from the expressive artist vendors, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, I, I just think, you know, that we only have so much space there, and I, I sort of think, you know, we've we've reached a a difficulty in raising sales more without looking at a whole different way of doing the program rather than the volunteers uh, which you know which in the other way of doing it is to hire more people to have it open more and some of those issues and you know at some point we may have to face that issue in Molly as you remember that was a takeaway from our budget meeting was that uh, we would be looking at that very model in terms of possibilities so um, the, with the failure of the computer system, Michael, was there, is there a backup position that we've developed or st a strategy or a methodology or no? It, Nothing at this point? It, it, it crashed and, you know, okay. those things are going to happen. And, you know, we, we're, just, we're just not big enough that, sure. you know, a backup really makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, but we, we have replaced all of the, uh, she's replaced all of the software and this year there's a whole new system for right or how it's processed. Yeah, you know, we look at, you know, could we just go to an old cash system and but it, th it throws off inventory and it just it messes it all up, so. Uh, my approach to that in Saco, Maine, when I was a management trainee <clears throat> and the systems went down, is you've got a, a, you've got a cart full of groceries. How much do you normally pay for this? Write me a check. Thank <laughs> you. We'll call it a day. That's the way we got through, and that was a July 4th weekend in Saco, Maine, where everybody from Canada goes to Old Orchard Beach, right. and the only two grocery stores around was one that I happened to be running as a management trainee. No computers. So it was a very interesting weekend, but uh, at the end of the day, that was my backup position. So sophisticated as that may be, it was a, certainly an approach. So anyway. I wonder how Shaw's would deal with that today. No, today they won't deal with it. But well, we're closing a store down there in that area anyways. <clears throat> Any other questions, financial questions? No? All right, then we'll move on to citizen opportunity for discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anybody here to discuss that? Nope, seeing none. Um, then we will go on to the presentation from the Maine Maritime Museum on the lens from Cape Elizabeth Light. And I will turn this over to Patty. Yeah, thank you. Um, you guys might remember, all of you or um, anybody who's watching um, potentially, that in the lobby here of Town Hall was um, a giant glass lens. And that was the lens from the Cape Elizabeth um, Lighthouse. And being that it was seen as a valuable piece of maritime history, uh, the Coast Guard, um, I believe the town, we paid for it to be taken up to um, the main Maritime Museum in Bath. Um, tonight we have um, Amy Lent, Executive Director of the Maine Maritime Museum, and Steve Caulfield, Vice Chair of the Maine Maritime Museum Board, here to give us a presentation to tell us a little bit more about what's happened to um, the, the lens and to be there and kind of plans for its, its future. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. So yes, when the lens needed to be removed from the town hall here, the Coast Guard called us and asked if we were interested in preserving it. Uh, they're hugely delicate, fragile objects. 
it's a second order Fresnel lens, so it's uh, the second largest that there is. And we talked about it among the staff for about five minutes <laughs> before saying, yeah, we really, really need to take this. We didn't know what we were going to do with it. We didn't know how we were going to preserve it. But we knew that it needed to stay in Maine and not be shipped off to a warehouse in Boston, which was what was going to happen to it if we didn't accept it. So we're here to talk a little bit about what those plans are. few uh, handouts here so I don't know if you, everybody can see this so the lens was crated up in 12 very large wooden crates um, and it's now in our uh, climate controlled storage facility at the museum so the plan is to create a way to experience this lens that has never been done anywhere else in the country to our knowledge. And I've talked to a lot of uh, people who are um, very expert in uh, lighthouse museums. So most people we know are not able to actually access the top of a lighthouse. You know, either they're not accessible um, because of um, physical reasons for visitors or they literally are locked out, which is the case in most uh, lighthouses today. So we're seeking to create an experience that will replicate the feeling of being at the top of the Cape Elizabeth Lighthouse Tower when the lens was there. So the image that you see there and on these boards shows the view that you see. Um, we've connected with the gentleman who's uh, kind of safekeeping the lighthouse. We've been up there. We've taken some photographs, measurements, and documentation with the intent of trying to um, understand what that space is like and how we can recreate it. And it's going to require an addition onto the museum. And so you can see in the, the layout here shows the main uh, galleries of the museum. So the museum is a 20-acre campus with 18 buildings. One of them is uh, the modern gallery space. And Barbe and Wheelock, architectural firm in Portland, has been working with us to determine how we could present this in a space that's going to make sense for the lens and for the rest of the museum. So you can see that green bump out shows where uh, the current plans are to add an addition that would be purpose built for this lens. The lens is, um, as some of you understood um, when you were <laughs> told that it was going to be difficult to keep it, can't have light exposure. They have a lot of special requirements. So this would be a space built just to house the lens. And this next board here shows from the outside looking in how the lens would fit into the space. So the idea is to recreate that lens with the, um, uh, the decorative top piece on it so that it would really feel like what you would see if you were right up there at the top. And from the inside view, this is a very rough uh, mock-up of what it would look like um, to visitors. So, you know, the, the things that you see shown on the wall there are not necessarily the exhibits that would be there. It would be a little bit more sophisticated than that. But just to give a sense of the space and how it would be fit out and, and the experience that you would have walking in and all of a sudden be confronted with, if you turn to your next page, you'd be confronted with this view of Portland Harbor and all of the boat traffic that comes in and out of Portland Harbor. We know it's one of the most important, busiest harbors on the East Coast, certainly in New England. It's for, um, for centuries. It's, you know, this whole port has built the economy of Maine to be what it is. So not just the economy, but also the culture of the state of Maine is really all rising from what happened here in Portland Harbor all along the coast and still happens today. So what we're trying to communicate to the 60,000 plus visitors who come from all over the world every year is both the emotional impact of being in a space like this and seeing a view like this. Uh, we want to create an experience where you could see the view changing over say 24 hours. The sun rises, the boat traffic picks up, the sun sets at the end of the day. Then over the course of four seasons, you know, a lot of our visitors are not here in the winter. They don't know how beautiful that is in the fall when the colors on the leaves and the sky and the water. We want to show all of that. So both the emotional experience of what that's like that probably 
I'm guessing nobody in this room has ever even seen, you know, at the top of that light tower to see what it's like with that lens behind you. And then the educational experience of why. Why were these things made? How did they work? What was the point of it? Um, how, how is it done today? You know, we don't use lighthouses for navigation today. We use other things. How, what, why? Yet Fresnel lenses are still um, used in technology. For example, your uh, car headlights <coughs> are using that same prism technology. So it's, you know, it's an emotional experience and it's also an intellectual and scientific experience for people to appreciate you know, what this meant historically, what it means today, and why it's important to preserve these things. So we're seeking to do something that has never been done before. And um, Steve Caulfield, who is the vice chair of our board, is going to finish up with um, how that happens, <laughs> the harder part. So the last slide in your packet right there. Thank you, Amy. This is the sermon on the amount. Uh, <laughs> You will see this is expensive. Uh, it's close to a million dollars to get this done properly. Uh, perhaps 400,000 for bricks and mortar, another 400,000 for the building of the exhibit, replicating the uh, experience, uh, including the video uh, material. Uh, because I'm older than dirt, I remember going into Grand Central and seeing the Kodak display uh, so brilliantly uh, up on the, the high walls. This will be similar to that, but much more dynamic uh, and, and very exciting. So it is a costly uh, kind of process. Uh, there are certain things that you never want to divide cost by use. For example, uh, the Grennans have told me you never want to divide tuition and room and board by the number of hours kids go to class. <laughs> Happily, the denominator is not discoverable, so you don't have to do that calculation. But as Amy said, we have 60,000 visitors a year, and so it begins to make sense that this $900 plus thousand dollar project over three or four years is costing perhaps under four dollars a visit uh, after a four-year period. The logical question is why don't you amortize that by raising the admission uh, four dollars? Well, uh, with a 20-acre campus and multiple buildings and a staff, uh, there are many young mouths at the table uh, that have to be fed, and we have a very conservative uh, main board of trustees who are adverse to spending money we don't have and so we're committed to raising this money. Happily, there is a $250,000 challenge grant in our hand. On Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock, uh, a donor agreed to provide $75,000 against that challenge uh, for this specific project. So we now have 150 of the challenge uh, uh, met in hand. The trustees have said, we will not begin this process unless we have 600,000. So we're working hard on it. We have a capital campaign ongoing. Uh, I'm also the director of the development committee, uh, or, or chair of the development committee. And uh, I am used to asking for money and uh, will continue to do that. We did want the community to know that this is what we're doing, to share in the excitement. Uh, I'm sorry to say not too many of the 60,000 people come from Cape Elizabeth. Not too many come from Bath either. Uh, so we would encourage you to come visit us sometime. Uh, we have a new exhibit opening this summer of uh, lobstering uh, in the end of July and a lot of other exciting things. Get to know us. We're trying to get to know your community and we hope we can count on families and individuals here to help us uh, achieve this goal. Happy to answer any questions. I think we've uh, stayed within our 15-minute time limit with six minutes left over. That's the way we like to do things. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Any counselors have questions? I have a quick question. Do you have a time frame? Did you miss that? In the, you guys are looking to raise this money and get going forward? Are you? We will continue to work until we raise the money, and we'll start until we do. Okay. Great. Other questions? Thank you, folks, very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you coming. Okay. I'm sure there is more.
We will uh, move on to the town manager's monthly report. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman Ray. First, it's really nice to see that Lens found a, a good home and wish them all the best as, as they continue on that. Uh, you know, whenever you give something up, you, you hope it's going to go somewhere where they'll take care of it. Uh, great, great plan. Uh, it, just a brief report. Uh, first, I, I join in thanking everyone for the, the Family Fun Day and the parade and the election and all those activities. So it's been a, a, a pretty uh, busy period. Uh, secondly, I, I do want to congratulate Darren Brown, a member of the Public Works Department. Uh, Darren, uh, uh, through a, a program of the Maine Local Road Center, uh, they, they, they have different tests and other things they do to become what they've known as a road scholar. Uh, not spelt like uh, the gentleman from some, uh, that Rhodesia was once named for, uh, but uh, you know, very pleased that Darren went through with that. And uh, let's see, the fourth in the department, the fourth road scholar in the department. So, really pleased about that. Congratulate and congratulate him. Uh, the second thing I did want to mention is Forrest King, who is the parks foreman at Forrest Park, has worked for the town for 37 years, uh, is retiring at the end of the month, and. Uh, you know, Fort Williams Park has been a labor of love uh, for Forrest. Uh, also, you know, the, the school grounds and particularly some of the school fields. And, you know, he's, he's just done a terrific job and I know Bob will miss him and I'll miss him and uh, I think the community will, will miss him as well. He's just been uh, an outstanding uh, employee of the town and really dedicated to uh, everything that, that he's done, uh, not only with the parks and the grounds, but also during the winter storms and whatever, he's uh, sort of the, the third person in charge after Bob and Jim Green uh, at, at you know actually being in charge and running some of the storms. So his experience will be missed, and, and he will be missed. <coughs> uh, on, on a sadder note, we had two elected officials who passed away, uh, former elected officials who passed away this last month. Uh, Kevin Sweeney, who served on the school board uh, for a number of years, was chairman of the school board for a couple of terms. Uh, died unexpectedly uh, uh, at the beginning of the month. And also Nancy Masterton, who uh, was the chairman of the town council, uh, who served, uh, represented Cape Elizabeth in the main House of Representatives, served on the main board of environmental protection. And uh, just a you know, really nice person. And we uh, enjoyed serving with her. And she really added you know, much perspective to the council. She also had been very active in legal and voters, and uh, you know I think added a, a really good perspective from that experience. But uh, uh, many of you might have known Nancy, and uh, very both she and her husband were very prominent in the community. And Nancy, after after Bob passed away, you know just really continued to devote herself to to public service and, and many different activities. Uh, other than that, you know things are going relatively well. Look forward to the rest of your meeting. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Any questions for Michael? Jim? Uh, a couple of us were talking about um, some of the email correspondence we got this week as it relates to cell phone uh, coverage. And I'm just curious if you could just give us a brief update of where we are on that. Yeah, it, just uh, by way of background, uh, council has been getting emails, particularly from Broad Cove, about you know, whether or not there would be cell coverage uh, you know, that would be improved in uh, that area, and and also because there is also is a council goal to, to look at enhancing cell coverage. Uh, the town has been in a in a lawsuit uh, with Verizon uh, Communications, whatever they call themselves now, uh, about possibly putting some antenna on top of the the water tower at uh, Avon Road in Shore Acres. Uh, the zoning board turned down that request uh, to install those antenna. Uh, the town was sued. The town is defending the zoning board. Uh, we don't know how that case is going to turn out. Uh, but the, the thinking, as I understand it, has been that the council would wait to engage on the larger issue, awaiting the results of that lawsuit to see uh, how that might turn out. But uh, you know, there's been different briefings on that, briefs that have been filed, and you know, I would expect a decision relatively soon. But uh, that's essentially where it stands and be happy to, uh, you know, some others have asked, you know, there was talk about putting one down and down by Fort Williams somewhere too, but uh, we haven't had any discussions with Verizon since mm -hmm. the lawsuit began. It just seemed untoward to be talking to, 
two of them about one thing when they're suing us on something else. So we haven't had that discussion with them. That's, I mean, thank you, Michael. That, that, that's important because I, I had shared that with one of the other counselors that there was some discussion about Fort Williams as a possibility. But then that sort of just petered away over time because of the lawsuit that had come forward. So again, um, it, is a, it is a council goal. So um, we're all midway through the year, as was stated by one of the citizens that um, so are we going to respond to those citizens with this current status from I, I'm just just rather than having each one of us writing to these people should we be you know giving them a single answer from the council's position at the moment as to why we're doing what we're doing in terms of waiting I, mean, I, I just just looking for gu guidance here that's all well it, it would be helpful just to know when you say you think it'll be resolved relatively quickly um, for those of us who are not in the know, does that mean two or three months, or does that mean two or three years? Uh, the chairman, uh, my, my sense is it'll be reserved within a month or two. Mm. Uh, you know, and, and then there's the issue is, you know, does either party appeal right. if the, the decision is adverse? Right. Uh, and if that were to happen, is that another six months or another? Th the only thing I would years? say is, I, if if the decision is adverse to the town. I would not, I would have the attorney come visit with the council before we would automatically appeal it. Okay. Thank you. I, I, if I could just follow up, I think Jim asked the right question. Um, what is the appropriate way to respond to the citizens and should that be something, I don't know, Kathy, do you want to respond and just say we've discussed it at the council level rather than leaving it hanging out there no response, or with each one of us sending an individual response? Yes. Yeah, counselors are welcome to respond however they would like to. Any email that you receive, mm -hmm. you know, aside from a few limitations on you know, things that were discussed in executive session, you can't disclose. Uh, in, in this case, nothing, you know, there's, other than what you might have discussed in executive session with the attorney, uh, you know, nothing of this is confidential. You know, if you would like us to, you know, if the council is okay with, uh, you know, for me to send a response that summarizes about what I said, if, if you want me to say that the council plans to revisit this just as soon as the current lawsuit is settled, if that is the desire of the council, I can respond to that. But not having had that discussion, this discussion, I wouldn't have felt right giving that response, not knowing if that is, is in fact, the, pos the position of the council as a whole. So maybe by a nod of heads, just... Yes. I mean, that's the, that's the reason for bringing it up, Michael, is that for us to, to send seven separate, you know, emails to these citizens, there is a sort of, there's some wisdom in what you're telling people. It's, it's answering a question that they're asking of us, and it seems like coming from a single source is the better way to go. That's just my, my, my feeling. Well, you know, I, agree. I will do a response to it, but, and I'll copy the council in each response, but again, if councilors wish to also respond, sure. thank they, you. They, there's no problem with that. Jamie, you had a question? I mean, I just thought, I mean, it's a publicly available docket in the federal court, and it'd be yeah. easy enough to get a six-minute response, you know, 0.1 hour build from the town's lawyer on where it is on the docket sheet and what's been briefed so far and yeah. what's coming next date-wise. It's a good idea, yeah. I'll ask John Wall for an update that we can share with the public on good. where it stands and send that as part of it. Good. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, then we'll move on to the uh, draft minutes of May 11th, 2015. Is there a motion to accept? So move. Molly? Move to accept the minutes Thank from you. May 11th. Second. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, discussion? Errors, omissions, questions? No? All in favor? Great. Then we will move on to item 78 review of the annual liquor license for the good table. Um, that's in your packet. Um, is there a motion to approve? Yes. Caitlin? I just have to make a disclosure. My family's farm, how was the farm does business with the good table. Thank you. Do any counselors have a concern with that? No? No. no. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Um, is there a motion to approve? Jessica. 
I move to approve the <clears throat> uh, what is the vitreous on it is right here. <laughs> Venus. Venus. Uh, malt, Ven Venus, Venice, and Spiritus license of a good table. Thank you, Jessica. Is there a second? Second. Oh. Oh, Jamie, thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the uh, review of the annual license for the local buzz. Jamie, do you wish to recuse yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any objection to him recusing? No. no. All right, then um, is there a motion to approve? So moved. So moved. Second. Thank you. I'm not sure which one you want to take, but take whichever. Um, discussion? No? All in favor? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Um, item 80. Library use policy. I believe this is Patty. Yes, hi. Okay, um, on behalf of the library board um, as liaison, um, I, um, you have before you a proposed library use policy. Um, the library um, from time to time goes through the different policies that they have and just feels like they want to keep them up to date. Um, in the policy the, the, um, that you have before you, there are two changes that I want to point out that were just typos or just um, inaccurate information. Uh, specifically, if you look under rules of conduct, line three, it says, um, I quote, cell phone ringers shall be on mute or vibrate in the library and it says no phone comes shall be um, established. That's supposed to be no phone zones. Um, the second correction is um, at the end of rules of conduct. It's the third to last line. And in that, um, it states that um, copies will be charged at 10 cents per copy. Um, it's actually um, going to be, it's uh, appropriately 15 cents per page. And they, they did that because they don't, they feel like somebody could say have a 50 um, page item and call that say that they're making a copy of that and they thought and charge 15 cents and they thought they might there might be some some yeah a vague area in there and there could be some dispute so um, with those changes so with those changes let me just um, briefly um, tell you um, what the intent of these two changes that are being made in this item um, I'll make a motion certainly we have discussion and hopefully you'll accept um, these as proposed um, the first is under rules of conduct um, as the original, um, the policies as they stand today, um, before these proposed changes, basically outlined um, all the different policies of things that you cannot do. You cannot, you know, um, bring a dog, for example, and in the different things, you cannot smoke. And what they felt is that um, they basically left room for interpretation. For example, if you didn't list everything you can't do, somebody would say, you didn't say I couldn't bring a cat, um, which I guess happened. So, um, so, they, um, so what they've done is created some broader language um, that basically gives more um, leeway to the library staff to make judgment calls um, and just making it broader. Um, and the second is under um, the public access for computers. And basically the big change in this is that it's the same kind of intent, is that um, that they simplified it because some of the rules that are in there under this, they um, were not enforcing. And so it, they felt they just, like, again, used broader language um, that was less rigid um, and at the end of the day was more relaxed and gives the library staff more leeway to make some decisions. So with that, um, I will move that um, we accept the proposed um, library use um, policy as um, presented tonight, and that's my motion. Thank you very much, Patty. Is there a second? I'll second yeah. it. Okay. Questions? Molly. Patty, I just have a quick question. Sure. Um, because I noticed those um, typos and the issue with the um, cost, yes. 10 cents per copy. So I had sent Jay an email and I asked him about process. Did that go back to the trustees and have they approved that change or 
And are these their recommendations, or is this where where do these recommendations come from? Okay, so there, um, the board of trustees did spend months um, reviewing these, and in the meetings that are the third Thursday of every month, they spent. Um, numerous meetings reviewing this and then approving it. And they did the last meeting approve these policies um, and are aware that it was 15 cents per page. Um, he just didn't make the change. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Jamie? Just a quick question. So it says no, where you, you another correction was no phone zones. 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 So I'm only confused in that if you have your cell phone ringers off or on vibrate, is there still going to be a separate zone where you can't even have a cell phone with you? Or is that, what's the intent? Yeah, I believe that they are, um, that there might be some zones where you can't have any phone on at all. So it sounds like that there might be some, in the no phone zones from what I understood, would that be places where you would not um, be talking or there would be no, absolutely no use. It seems a little restrictive, like if you wanted to text or something. Mm -hmm. That would be my concern because you're not going to have like a box you have to leave it in and go into this other mm -hmm. zone. Mm -hmm. So I think as long as you had the no, it be on mute or vibrate, then mm -hmm. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to have a phone with you. Yeah, I, I believe, I think that was the intent that yeah. truly that you can have your phone with you. I yeah. think that the, the intent of these were to make them more relaxed, to leave the library staff, to give them more flexibility. So I, I can't imagine that the intent of that language was to create uh, more rigid rigidity in the rules. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions, Jessica. Is there any was there any discussion of a, like a damage policy for all the new computers that are going to be in there, anything like that? I mean, there, there's something that addresses inappropriate use, but I suspect that involves websites and so forth. But what about any any discussion about damage? No, it's a great question. Not that I heard, but I'm sure that there is some type of policy. Perhaps Molly, that you've been involved, you might know something. Well, I'm like, thank you. Um, I don't think we've had that conversation yet. We certainly didn't have it when I was on the Board of Trustees, and we have not had it on any of, in any of the meetings we've had on the Building Committee. But I will say, Jessica, I think you raise an interesting point. I think it's not so much computers. I can imagine in the Media Lab or in you know some of the creator spaces, it, we probably will need to have a new policy in place for that. I just don't think we have that equipment yet. We don't have those spaces available yet. Um, so we haven't anticipated, I, I say we, none of the committees I've served on have anticipated that. Michael? So the Jay Sherman librarian indicated at the department head meeting early today that the library trustees are going to be looking at all of the policies again. Okay. I, they wanted to get this, this set forward, but and even going through this, the, you know, looking at the new library, looking at moving forward, they, they know they need to look at all the different policies. Well, and I, you know, when I was the liaison, I don't ever remember that being a discussion, but, you know, we're putting, we're making <coughs> quite an investment mm -hmm. in a lot of new equipment. Yeah. So I'm glad that that's something that will be looked at. Yeah, and Jessica, I'm going, the meeting is, I think, this Thursday, so I can certainly bring up um, the council's concern with that um, and at least in, we said, be the the conduit for information coming back to them, they take a look at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jamie. Just while we're adding things to your list. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that I've ruined a, a nice Apple computer by spilling my coffee on it. So I wondered about the liquid around computers rule at the library if they have any. Uh, I think this, they do say no, no beverages. They kind of made it. Um, just in general. Just sure. in general, yeah. I think that that'll be the staff will certainly be stopping anybody from having beverages in okay. the library. I have a question. Sure. Um, under the use of library by groups, um, I notice it says, however, due to limited staff availability, the library requires groups to schedule. And I'm, I'm just wondering if we should really have, however, due to limited staff availability, it kind of. It sounds a little negative to me, and I'm just wondering if we just start with the library requires groups to schedule in advance appropriate times for visits. Um, it just seems like we don't need to qualify that statement. Sure. And should we qualify it in that way? It sounds, I think it may be true, right? but um, I'm not sure. I would, I can't really speak. We certainly could push this document back down, but I would think that the group knowing the board that they probably would be okay if the council feels like that's a, a change that should be made we can make that change and 
I could certainly take the heat for that, I suppose, <laughs> to get this pushed through. But I think that if you, if the council feels that that should be a change made. Patty, if you say it's okay as an amendment, I'll second your amendment. Okay. So um, let's do that then. So can you specifically um, guide me? I, have to I would just take out the words, however, due to limited staff availability, comma. Okay. And I would turn the word the into a capital T. Okay. Um, but yep, yep. I don't know how others feel about that. I agree. I like it. Okay, great. And I will just find that thing. Um, I, I'll, um, I'll move that we amend the document to um, say, just as you said, uh, get rid of the limited staff ability, start with um, capital T. Mike, do you want to say something? You, no. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm fine. I just, you know, we, we, I just thinking, listen to the conversation. You know, we've tended to defer to the Board of Trustees on this thing, but you know, I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the trustees want to look at this. Jay Shermer has announced that he's retiring, you know, after the first of the year, and to me, this is just going to be a really good opportunity coming up between the new library, the new librarian, and the trustees, uh, you know, working on different projects. Uh, you know, once the library is done, to me, it, it, you know, there's, there's, this thing probably needs a real good editor. Uh, I'm a strong believer in taking policies and simplifying them, and my sense is this is a policy that's just has developed a lot of baggage over the years. Okay. So what I'm hearing for you, we're going to be probably revising this, but um, for now, is the council comfortable at this point making the changes for the work that's been done today, so there can be an updated policy, and then perhaps there'll be. Um, with the new yeah. director, can yeah. we look at this? Yeah, and, and the changes you make this evening, the way these policies work, even though they're advisory to the council, we tend to try to get both groups into concurrence. So anything you recommend, we'll take back to them, and as long as they're in concurrence, it won't come back to you again. Okay. But we will, we will go back to them and see that, uh, see that they're in concurrence. Great. So, um, Patty, you've seconded. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? All right, all in favor? Great. Thank you very much, Patty. Okay. Do we need to move to approve the document as a whole? Is that with the amendment? Do we do that already? Yes. We just did. We did. It's, it's approved. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank and you. we will move on to item 81, uh, poll location for Old Ocean House Road at Alwive Cove Road. Uh, Caitlin? The request from CMP is on my family's behalf. We need to have a new poll put in. That's why I'm just that. I don't know if I can recuse myself for that, or um, do do counselors feel that she should recuse? I don't have any issues with it. Okay. So well, thank you for disclosing, Michael. Just, just a brief comment. On, I'll speak on both 81 and 82 to make this go clear. We did send notices to uh, the all the immediate abutters right where these polls are. We received no objections to either poll. Okay. Good, thank you. Um, then should we take them as a group or? Each together. That you know. Individually. Individually. Okay. So is there a motion to approve item 81 poll? Jim. Um, do we have to make a motion to take both of them in a block or do we have to do them you one just at a time? Do, just do them, do them separate. One at a time? Yes. Okay. I move that uh, we approve the poll location on Old House, and Old House, Old Ocean House Road, and Elva Wife Cove Road. Thank you, Jim. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second that. Thank you, Molly. Discussion. All in favor. Item 82. Is there a motion? Thank you, Jamie. We approve the Fowler Road at Hampton Road uh, approval for utility. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, but just one more disclosure. The person looking for that poll location is also a close family friend. So just making all the disclosures I can make. Okay. And I'd like to disclose that I own the house on the corner of that road, and I believe the poll is going to be on that side, but that's okay. Because I, I got my notification. Do any counselors have concerns about either of those disclosures? No. No. Okay. Um, so I have a motion from Jamie. Is there a second? Second. Caitlin, thank you. Discussion? No. All in favor? Great. Uh, proposed revised appropriation. Um, Michael. 
Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman Rick. Uh, what I have before you is uh, an action that is needed between now and the end of the year, or else we'll have to stop spending money in, in five different departments. Every year when the council adopts the budget, they, they approve so much for each department, and under the town charter, we're not allowed to exceed that without council authorization. In one case, yeah, we already have exceeded it, but uh, it's a matter of the timing of the meeting, and I didn't want to shut down the property of public works. Uh, Thank you. Anyway, uh, the, the five are legal and audit services. As you can see, uh, legal services projected to be 4,000 over budget. Audit services about 2,300 over budget. Uh, audit services is the case we just have. not I don't think the appropriation has kept up with what the expense is. It, it's more of a budgeting error. Legal services because of the aforementioned Verizon lawsuit and also because of continuing legal bills for some of the issues of the Shore Acres various issues. Uh, public works is primarily because of winter storms uh, and also some fuel, particularly fueling costs and equipment maintenance. That is a very large amount. It's $141,000. Uh, human services because of more general assistance needs. Facilities management is, is a case of just a little more maintenance than anticipated and some fuel <coughs> costs and town center fire station is, is again on fuel costs. You know, the, the, the total of, the, of all of these is $174,487. And as you know, we, if you look at the rest of the budget, we should have savings to make up for this difference. And particularly on the revenue side, our revenues are projected to be about over half a million dollars uh, above budget, so. Questions for Michael? Is there a motion to approve the revised appropriations? Jessica? I, I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Second it. Jim? Any further discussion? All in favor? Great. Um, it, item 84, review of deadline for solid waste and recycling long range planning committee. Michael? Yeah, this uh, Jessica Sullivan chairs this committee, and I excerpted an, an email she sent to me to put on the agenda mm -hmm. that I, I received this last week, and they'd like an extension until August 31. As she indicates, they've had 11 meetings, making good progress. I apologize. I should have called on you. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. May I address the council? Please. Yeah. Um, as you see in that, um, that uh, paragraph there, we have had 11 meetings. Um, we are asking for two more months. Um, and a significant part of this uh, is, has to do with the fact that the committee is going to write the report, thus saving a great deal of money, which will be used more for specific engineering um, analysis and has been. So this is adding to our, our uh, request because there's a lot of time involved in writing this re draft report. So I think that I'd like to commend the committee for volunteering to do this. So this is very, very good. So. Did you want to make a motion? Yes, I move that we accept the proposed uh, extension for the Solid Waste and Recycling Long Range Planning Committee <clears throat> to extend from the original June 30, 2015 deadline to August 31st, 2015. Thank you. Is there a second? Molly? A second. Thank you. Questions? Oh, okay. All in favor? Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to request the town council to suspend the rules to take up one additional item out of order. Uh, we received about a week ago a request for a poverty abatement, and the council is required to act on them within 30 days. Uh, the next council meeting doesn't fall within the 30 days. I originally this this came, and you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, we I thought we were going to have a workshop next week that we would have added it to that, but. It, it, doesn't appear we're going to do that. I, I will say that this is, is, is one the council is very familiar with. You've dealt with the particular client and the issues, and I think you could probably do it in executive session in about five minutes. So what I'd like to first is request that you suspend the rules to take up uh, an item out of order, uh, which is to consider a, a poverty abatement request uh, and to go into executive session with that in conformance with Title I, Section 405 uh, of the main right to know law. Wow. 
did that right off the top of your head. I, I did. I would have had it writing. So Deb's going to recheck the references, though. So we, <laughs> should, we should vote on this. If you'd like to, you need to suspend the rules. It takes a two-thirds vote to, to okay. suspend the rules. Uh, I move that we suspend the rules. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? So before we um, um, go to the, I assume we go to the Jordan Conference Room to yeah. discuss, um, I think we should ask for a citizen opportunity for discussions of items not on the agenda. Is there anybody to discuss anything not on the agenda? Nope, seeing none, then um, I guess we will um, motion to adjourn. We will go. Motion, motion to executive. executive. Oh, excuse me, motion to go into executive session. Jessica. I move that we go into executive session to review a poverty abatement request pursuant to MRSA. Da, 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 da. Uh, I need to say it though. Yeah. Um, could you? 1405. Thank you. Is there a second? Is there? Thank you, Patty. So once we have completed this, we will adjourn the town council meeting. You, you need to take a vote on this still yeah. after you deliberate right. it. Yeah. Right. So we will go to executive session. Come back here for a minute and then go back for the workshop. And then we'll go for the workshop. Okay. It should only take five minutes. We need to vote. Okay. So we'll leave everybody sitting here. I apologize. So a point, point of order. Yes. We need to vote on that, that, that motion. motion. So I'm sorry. Vote. Yes. I'm sorry. All in favor. Thank you. I got a little trying to <laughs> figure it all out. So we'll go running out back and then we'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, so first of all, I need a motion to exit executive session and return to public session. Is there a motion? I so move. Thank you, Jessica. Second. Thank you, Caitlin. All right, so now we need to um, vote to, um, do you know the wording? Somebody to leave executive session. Maybe. Right. No. It's either to just move or deny. Okay, so I need a motion to either approve or deny the abatement request. No. Jessica. I move to deny the abatement request. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Jim? Um, and we will not have any discussion because this is um, <coughs> a private issue. So um, unless there's somebody that wants to say something that's not particular to this individual. All right, so all in favor? Any opposed? Great, thank you very much. Um, so um, then I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Jessica, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Caitlin. All in favor? And we will move back to the Jordan Conference Room for our um, workshop. Oh, yeah, I did all.